Superboy, number three, written by Scott Liddell, art by R.B. Silva. We last left off with Superboy losing consciousness and taking out an entire facility, crashing it down into rubble. This issue picks up somewhere else. It's some random couple at a, like a quickie mart sort of place and he's like hey babe if you haven't paid for the stuff already could i get this candy bar and the girl's like sure thing sweetie uh, i don't think they'll mind as it pans out and reveals that everybody in the store has has their faces burned off or something they're all just smoldering skulls and they're like cool where should we go babe and he's like let's go east sounds wonderful babe pass me the candy bar and then we just Never deal with them. I know they're setting up for a future issue. I get that. But, like, what? Anyway, <laughs> going back to what's actually happening. Because Superboy's been narrating this whole time about his own thoughts. Where he's like, I wonder what the real world's going to be like. I wonder if it's going to be nice. And then when he finally finishes with that little cutaway, he's like, well, I shouldn't be thinking about that right now. Because I'm currently plummeting into the middle of the earth in molten lava. And he's in molten lava. And he's trying to get an idea as to like how he can use his telekinetics. And he's got the whole recap page, but whatever. Uh, he tries grabbing on the stuff, and he like grabs a rock, and it's hot in his hand. And he's like, "Ah, crap! Okay, but wait a minute! I'm laying in molten lava. How am I laying in molten lava? And that doesn't burn me, but a rock in my hand does." And he comes to the conclusion that like, if he's thinking about it, if he recognizes a danger and can see it he can protect himself from it. It's only like surprise attacks that can actually get him with his telekinetic ability. So when he comes to that, he's like, cool. Somehow that allows me to fly out. And he just zooms his way up out of the center of the earth. As he's leaving, some woman pops her head out of the lava and looks up at her. We cut to the uh, nowhere agents, Zaniel and Red, and they're like, okay, Zaniel's like, okay, I might have pushed Superboy out of the nest a bit too fast. And Red's like, oh, you think? You think maybe you did that? And we cut to Rose, reintroducing herself again. And Rose is like, I'm not leaving until I either see him dead or he's back here. And Red's like, look, we can't really keep an entire explosion like this under wraps, so we gotta go. Like, you don't have a say in it. And Rose is talking psionically to Red and was like, Hey, Red, we all know you have the power to get down there and wade through the debris to find him. Why don't you? And Red's like, Shut up. Don't tell anybody. So I guess Red now has powers. Anyway, um, Rose jumps off down into the abyss and we don't see her again. Then we cut to... Another random couple, a completely different random couple, mind you, but I thought it was the same one during my first read-through, so I had to reread because this didn't make any goddamn sense. So there's a random couple just making out, and the dude's like, whoa, this is hot. And she's like, yeah, it is. And he's like, no, really, it's super hot. And then Superboy comes bursting out, like lava's still partially dripping off of him off the ground. And he's like, oh, good, I'm out, I'm free. Uh, okay, where am I? And he looks around, he sees the girl there, and... She's wearing the, the the super S, and she's like, "Oh, you you're you're one of them." And uh, the dude hits Superboy in the back of the head with a tire iron, and that's where he gets confirmation that only surprise attacks can really get to him. Um, but then I don't know. The, Superboy looks back and he's like, "You want to try that one again?" The boyfriend goes and hides, and then he starts like flirting with the girlfriend and. She's like, oh, you want to take... Uh, uh, hu humans are so fragile. You got to be careful with us. And he's like, oh, my defense, I just broke out of prison. She's like, oh, wow, okay, well, that's something. Um, and Superboy's like, well, do you mind if I take you home? And he picks her up and they, she points him in the direction of the city and he just zooms there at like lightning speeds. She, They arrive and he's like, oh, well, there you go. She hurls and she's like, get away from me, freak. And then uh, there's an explosion from the ground. 
he, he's wrapped up in a bunch of piping tele, telekinetically, and he's like, wait a minute, is this my power? No, I don't think this is my power. And that woman who was down in the lava pops up and was just like, you think I'd let you send me back into that prison? And he's like, I don't even know who you are. You were in the prison? You could, you, I didn't know. And he's like, yeah, okay. Like, I'm going to believe, wait a minute, you smell like a Kryptonian, but also mixed with a human? Uh, you're you're an alien human hybrid and you shouldn't be allowed to live and then she starts fighting him while keep on saying that he's an alien and he's like no i'm a clone yes but i'm just human i'm not an alien but in, he's got his whole mental thing of like is she right am i actually an alien and as she just keeps repeating it over and over again he just says stop saying that and then she melts she just melts he didn't even do anything she just melts a crowd gathers to be like, oh, hey, well, what was that all about? And Superboy's like, I don't, I don't know. Bye. And he just flies away before he hurts somebody else. He realizes there's only one place he can get answers. I'm going to, I'm going to point this out real quick. We cut to nowhere and they give a little location subheader. Nowhere. Location somewhere. I hate you. Anyway. <laughs> Now we get Dr. Red. She's arrived back at her apartment or whatever. Actually, I'm not even sure. It just looks like she's in her lab still, but there's a shower. I don't know. She She's about to undress the shower when Superboy comes in. And it's like, hey, I think you need to tell me the truth. Because the, if I don't know about myself, I'm a greater risk to the world. And Red, and she's like, oh, well, what are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to threaten me? And Superboy's like, maybe. And then Red turns around and just bursts out of like her armor she's super buff and she's like after i gave you life you think i'm gonna drop to my knees and beg for mercy think again and superboy's like all right didn't see this one coming and that's where the issue ends oh my god so much happened in this issue this issue was like lightning paced like by the time i got to page like 10 i forgot what happened on page one so much happened and yet nothing at all. Who is the lady in the lava? Who are those kids at the front? Why are they not the same kids in the middle? Where did Rose go? Why did that lady melt? I don't understand these things. I'm so confused. I'm giving this a six. <laughs> I'm just, I'm done. I don't, it's a fine issue in that it manages, like, I'm following it. It's okay. I understand how we get from A to B. You know what? Screw that. I'm dropping down to 5.5. I've made myself angry over the course of this. <laughs> the, I, my biggest issue with it is that it's throwing in so much so quickly. Like, this all happened over the course of maybe half an hour in Superboy time. Like, there's no way that it took any longer than that. That's ridiculously fast-paced. Because it's just like, okay, here, here's all of these things that we're going to introduce you to and then immediately throw away. Who's the lady in the lava? I don't know. She doesn't have a name. She literally does not have a name. And she's gone. 5.5. 5. And the longer I talk about it, the lower it's going to get. So I'm ending it now. 5.5 5, Superboy number three.